You know, oftentimes when we look at creative finance, you have to really put yourself in the shoes of the seller. And the better you can understand what's important to them, I think the better you can create terms that are favorable for everybody. It's a true win-win. You're gonna save $40,850 in your first year of doing, doing your write-off. The main reason I bought this house was for the tax benefit. You immediately made $40,000 yeah. before you even touched the property. What up, dude? Are you just in the neighborhood or something? Guys, Jerry Norton. Um, yeah, we already knew the house was here, so sorry. <laughs> All right, tell us about the deal, dude. Okay, quite the quite the sight for sore eyes, huh? It's I, I can see the vision, dude. I can see. Well, that's why I like you, Pace, because you see like this, and you're like, wow. This well, is good. I like the bo the shell of it. I could see like a porch wrapping around, maybe. Yeah. And you also have a bunch of land over huge here. Huge lot. Yeah, great location. Huge lot. So it goes all the way to that tree line there. It's like half an acre back to that fence. Wow, this Has is the great. Garage. You bought this on creative terms, right? Creative finance. Yeah, contract for deed. Why would you use a contract for deed? They were worried about the do on sell do on sell clause or something. No, no. It was actually the seller required. Yeah. Now it's funny here, I learned this real quickly in Montana. They call everything seller financing when really what they mean is contract for deed. So they even advertise it, seller financing. And, and I've talked to, everybody I talk to, they're like, oh, seller financing. And then when you get down to it, it's, it's contract, contract for deed. deed. Yeah. yeah, Jordan and I, you already know Jordan. Yeah. Um, him and I have that R, the RV park that you know we're, we're looking at right now and we had to convert the contract to a contract for deed because there's an SBA loan on it that we were gonna take over subject to. But they were really worried about the due on sale clause on the SBA loan. So we're like, okay, well, let's do contract for deed. So you're doing a contract contract for deed on this property, which yep. means the deed is not transferring into your yes. name, which is not a problem. I love it. Yeah, I do I too. would actually prefer it. I think in a lot of ways, um, especially, are you taking over an underlying debt or is no, this? No, free and clear. Free and clear, okay. So it's a seller finance deal. The seller is going to give you the deed once you refinance, you sell, sell the property or you pay him off. But get this, mandatory five year prepayment penalty. Oh wow, so he wants? Yes. You to hold this. Mm -hmm. He does not want to cash out. Does is it anytime soon? He has a tax thing he's worried about. Yeah, he doesn't okay. want. He doesn't want to have the tax implication. So think about that. You know, we always think, well, what's the benefit to the seller? He created these terms. He was very strict on interest rate, down payment, and he was adamant about a prepayment penalty, five-year prepayment, which worked for me because I wanted to hold it anyway. It's interesting you bring that up. Obviously, I know you know what the audience is thinking is like, why would a seller sell it to you on seller finance? Oh, it gets better. He's 90, the owner's 90, and he wants a five-year prepayment penalty. Okay, so this the question <laughs> the question that people always ask is, why would a seller sell on seller finance, when, especially when they're old? Why wouldn't they just want all their money up front, right? So let's answer these questions. Why would a guy at 90 years old do a deal like this and not want all his money? Money right now so I asked the this was an agent deal so I asked yeah. the agent that very question and her first response was Jerry this guy is full-time active investor a lot of money in in his mind he's he's not going anywhere in five years right. so that's one and think about it, he's 90 and he's still active clearly he's his mind is you know probably right. whirling like yours and mine a thousand miles miles an hour, right? And second, it'll just go down to heirs anyway if he does pass, and he knows that. Yeah, so that's the number one thing what I see in seller finance guys is that you are negotiating with a seller and you're assuming the seller wants what you want in your life and you're 20 years old or you're 23 years old, like Kevin, who's 22, he would want all of his money. He wouldn't want to, what's funny is Kevin will do 60, 70 sub two deals this year, but he would never sell to you on subject to or seller finance because he wants all his money. Yeah. Meanwhile, you've got a 90 year old seller who's wealthy and receiving all that money is actually problematic for him because of taxes. taxes yeah. And what the heck is he going to do with it that he's not getting a better, he's getting a better return with you while he's being the bank. Yeah, he got the price he wants. He's getting interest on his payments every month. He's not having a tax implication. So, yeah. because I bought it for this very same reason he's sold it for the tax benefits right you get same you'll, benefit you'll get uh, you'll get the tax write-off so you'll be able to save some money on your your income this year yeah and what's the purchase price on this house 375 okay 375 so here's how much jerry will save on his taxes this year okay so 375 purchase price divided by 27.5 multiplied by seven so if he does accelerated depreciation mm -hmm. this property will give you a write-off of ninety five thousand four hundred and fifty four dollars just, just this year and at your tax bracket and you can choose to use this anytime by the way yeah i don't like, have to use it. i'm not going to use it this year so he's in puerto rico so he doesn't need to use this so he could wait three years let's say Anne marie wants him to move back just stuff what wink wink Anne marie i i, I know <laughs> So in three years, you decide, all right, I'm back in the States. I can now use that tax benefit. You're gonna save yourself 
let's see, $95,000, let's say, you're gonna wipe out $95,000 of active income and at your tax bracket of 43%, you're gonna save $40,850 in your first year of do, doing your write-off on this house. 40 grand. Which is significant because if I'm totally honest, Pace, I only bought this house for the, not only, the main reason I bought this house was for the tax benefit. You immediately made $40,000 yeah. before you even touched the property. Now I want it to cash flow because who doesn't want positive cash flow? So that's a really important thing when I when I looked at, okay, well, how do I structure this? What do I do with this property? I mean, it needs a lot of work. Clearly right. that's obvious. We're in the middle of demo right now. That I didn't buy it. It did not look like this when I bought it. I thought you were <laughs> gonna give me a tour of the property. How am I gonna get in? <laughs> we can get in the back. Kevin, can you boost me <laughs> you up? Gotta you gotta jump through the front door. <laughs> so I'm gonna dump a hundred grand into this thing and, we, and we'll talk about like what I'm gonna do with it. but. My my point is, I'm trying to think, okay, well, how do I create positive cash flow? Not to make that any kind of living income or anything, but rather just to war chest it, right? Rainy right. day it. For when something happens, I've got reserves. So when you're 90 years old, you don't need to cash out your rental yeah. properties because you're so wealthy. Yeah, yeah. And there's high demand here. It's 10 minutes from you know the ho my house. So yeah, it just worked out really well. Okay, so 375, how much money down? 40,000. Okay, so about 12% down, which is phenomenal compared to like Landon Moore. Landon was buying traditionally for four or five years. What was your average down payment you put on a property? 15% to 25%. Yeah, 15 to 25%. So doing a creative deal, did he check your credit? Nope. Did he ask about your bank account? Nope. Did he subscribe to your YouTube channel? Nope. Okay. You probably, <laughs> he might have. You probably should be subscribing to his YouTube channel. This he's the this is the model of the best YouTube Actually, channel. Actually, that was mandatory. I said, look, if you're gonna do this, you have to be a subscriber. The 90-year-old guy's like, what's YouTube? <laughs> Maybe that's how he knew what a contract for deed was, is going on your channel. Okay, so you get 375, 40 grand down. 6%, which was okay, I mean. 6% to the agent? No, no, to the interest rate. Oh, 6% in interest 6 rate. 6%'s great. Yeah. I just got quoted on a DSCR loan, 8.25%. Yeah. So it's, that's how I looked at you're it. you're two and a quarter lower than the market. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. You know, and going back to contract for deed, so that's really popular here. And one of the reasons why I love contract for deed is because it's so advantageous to the seller, which means now I can use that to my advantage when I pitch, right, creative, because I can say, look, it's really safe. You don't have a whole lot to worry about here. If I screw up, you have the deed. You already. just take, the, yeah, in fact, what they made me do, which I thought was really cool for them, is not only did I sign the deed, which he holds now, right. so it does not transfer into my name. That's contract for deed, right? Executory contract. So he has all the security. Yeah, it's still in his name for his protection. I also signed a quick claim deed. Just in case you default, he takes the property right back. He literally will have the deed, record it right back to himself, and in a, in a day, he owns his property again. Right. So when a Literally. seller, when a seller or or an agent says, "Well, how is the seller secure? How does the seller? What happens if the payment doesn't get made?" The answer it was just given to you. There's the answer right there. If you ever have a seller who's who's nervous about a seller finance, because let's think about traditional seller finance. If we did a traditional seller finance and I default, he would have to go through the entire foreclosure process. If I'm not very helpful through through that, I could drag it out for a year. Yep. You know, he you doesn't get his property. You could file bankruptcy and like. Yeah. yeah, property's getting neglected, all these things. Whereas now with a with an executory contract, whatever that is, every state's a little different. It literally puts the seller in the driver's seat. And I don't care because I have no intention of defaulting ever. Right. And I get a creative deal done. So it's, it's really advantageous. Jerry and I did a 30 part series, I think, <laughs> on creative finance. We'll probably continue to add to it. This might be in that series or standalone video, but which, what- I, Which that thing is like a, a YouTube classic, that series. Oh my gosh, you I get I mean? a DM, two DMs, yeah. three DMs every single day about, oh my gosh, you just changed my life. Yeah. So go and check that out. If you guys don't know what a contract for deed or an executory contract is, click the link in the description and we'll make sure that you guys are guided towards that. Or maybe my team will give you something up here. <laughs> Eric, no? Okay. So you do a contract for deed, 375, 6%, no balloon, or you got a 10 year balloon. Well, there's a five just... year prepayment, so there's really no balloon. Okay, there's just a five year opposite. prepayment. He's got yeah. the opposite of a balloon. He yeah, basically opposite. says, the seller goes, I don't want you to pay me off. And it's huge. It's a 25% penalty of my purchase. So what would that be? It'd be 80, 87,000 something. Yeah, if I cash him out in, within five years, I pay a massive penalty. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I happily agreed to it. When you were brand new to this, if somebody told you a seller would not want you to pay them <laughs> off through seller finance, would you be like, what? Like, what? Who would ever want that? Right. Yeah. But when you get into the game, guys, you understand that what Jerry said about understanding the seller's <laughs> motivations, their bunnies, the problems they're going through. This seller doesn't have a painful situation. He has a gain that he's trying to get on this property. He wants to win, and he also wants to offload the responsibility of the property and become the bank, which is also 
what Jerry and I will ultimately do in 20 years or whatever it is, at some point we will just become the bank as well. Yeah, and it was interesting, Pace, when I, I tried to negotiate the interest rate down from six, and he was like, no, 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 he just checked. He knows rates are at seven and a half and eight today, so six is, it. so in his mind, he's like, no, six is a deal. Yeah, six is a deal. I'm not gonna give you a smoking deal, but I'll give you a deal. Yeah, it's I'll make it work the, for you, yeah. yeah. He, was, he like, was right. smart, win-win for, for both yeah, of you guys. it worked for me too, because I don't wanna pay 8%. So contract for deed, you guys go through title, still through a contract for deed. Mm -hmm. The agent's getting paid? Yep, agent got paid out of the 40,000 down, so I didn't pay the agent. Okay, great. And I found the deal, so there was no you know, bird dog or yeah, wholesale fee on this one. How did you so, find this deal, on market? Yeah, yeah, it was interesting because I could do a whole nother, let's do a whole nother video and I'll explain kind of how I won the deal because I was late to the game. Okay. So there were already multiple full price offers on the deal and I still got it. Okay, so guys, hopefully this video helps you understand contract for deed, that deals like this can happen. If you guys want to learn more about contract for deed, which is exec executory contracts, go over to Jerry's YouTube channel. I don't know where this video will land. It might end up going on Jerry's channel, my channel, I don't know. But go to the creative finance playlist that we did together. Go watch that from the very beginning. What is creative finance? All the way through sub two, seller finance, hybrids, wraps, lease options. Oh my gosh, that's such a great series. And we're gonna make two more videos here. One, about the deal. I wanna know what the heck Jerry's doing with this. He's got a freaking half an acre. I wanna know what he's doing. He's he's gonna spend a hundred grand. I wanna see what that what that, that's all about. And then we're gonna do another video about how he found the deal and won the deal. And we'll see you guys in those videos.